Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys a pack opening video for Ashes of Outland. Now, uh, a lot of the details will be explained throughout the video. Um, a lot of this is kind of my reaction to some of the cards because some of them I feel weren't included in the big card review. I think they were later released because they were like kind of neutral cards that maybe Blizzard didn't quite expect people would talk about too much. There's a few new cards I actually hadn't noticed uh, in this video. But the main focus of this video is on the new pack system. So with Ashes of Outland, and I believe it follows in all the other expansions and the classic set, um, you can no longer get duplicates of any rarity. Starting from about a year ago or so, um, you couldn't get a legendary if you already had it. Now if you had all the legendaries, you could get duplicate legendaries, but yeah, it would not really apply to too many people. Most people opening just like even a hundred packs really wouldn't open too many duplicate legendaries. Well, Blizzard has upped their generosity. Obviously, Harrison is a super expensive game compared to other games, but you know, compared to other card games, debatably so. Well, they're acknowledging this and they're making the game cheaper. And they're doing this by the no duplicate rule um, follows in epics and rares and commons. So I wanted to basically um, open up both of the pre-order bundles. So it's 145 packs total. It doesn't include the legendary gift for free among the other rewards, all that kind of stuff. It's just the packs from the two bundles. What can you expect to get? How much of the set can you expect to have? These questions will be answered in today's video. Enjoy. I am part of my own fireside gathering. Blizzard has enabled fireside gatherings for personal use, so I won't be playing with anyone. Hot form will not be released from the basement this time, but it does give us an opportunity to open packs. And opening packs is a little bit different than before, because before, when you'd open packs, you'd get like a few of the cards you want, and then 63 copies of Lepernome, all right? What I'm really curious is, because this, this, these 145 packs, these are both pre-orders. So what I'm really curious is, how much of the actual set do we get with the full pre-order bundles with the new pack changes? All right, so science, right? It's not just pack opening. It's science. We obviously won't get too many legendaries. Now, this is also a good excuse to look at some of the cards, because I certainly don't remember quite all of them. Deal 3 damage to an enemy minion and a random friendly one. So if you don't have a guy, it just does 3 to a random enemy. It's hard to synergize 3 to a friendly, though. That's a bit tough. That's a bit tough, I would say. This uh, Apotheosis card is really frustrating to play against, and uh, I imagine that Rogue card is pretty good. Oh, you choose the enemy. Oh, wow, that's really good then. Okay. I love this guy. You get a Fiery War Axe on three, and you get a 2-2 two, two as well. And for whatever it counts, it's a demon. <laughs> Skull of Gul'dan. No, this is just the fire side that allows you to open your packs from the pre-orders only. Reliquary of Souls. Strong card. Dirty Tricks. The Rush Giver Killer. Streamer RNG. I think you still get a guaranteed legendary in your first six packs. Alright, so if this new pack rule thing holds true, we should not see a Librem of Justice for at least like 60 or 70 packs. I think around that time, we probably will have all of the commons, though. First 10. Yeah, that's what I said. You get legendary your first 10. The Dragon Knot Overseer is quite interesting, but... I don't know. Zoo Priest. How good will it be? Bit of a tough call. The Matron's very good. Star Scryer. You opened your 145 and only got six legendaries. Um, well, it, normally the pack rates are one legendary every 20, and you're guaranteed to get one in your first 10. 
Now, it's not a linear, so it's not like you average one in the first five. It kind of slopes up. It's like a limit, and the limit is on 10. So with that in mind, you'd probably get a legendary around pack seven or eight. It's 145. So the average luck should dictate that you'd get nearly eight. So six ain't too bad. More scrap shots. The Disguised Wanderer is quite interesting. I'm not sure it's very good. I think it's not very... There's only 10 Legendaries expansion. I think there's quite a bit more than that. We got the Porcupine. You got 5 Legendaries and 145. Jeez. Uh, the Demon Hunter class does look very strong, yes. Hey, speaking of that, those are some pretty broken Demon Hunter cards. <laughs> Think of it this way. If you're losing, Immolation Aura is better than Consecration. <laughs> and Imprisoned Antion is better than just most cards in the game, actually. Yeah. Demon Hunter has a weakness of just not having as many cards, so it'll be interesting to see how that balances with the very high power level of the few cards they do have. Skull of Gul'dan again. BG updates. Um, I'm not sure, so... Skystalker might be better than I think. Dark Portal. You have at least 8 cards in your hand. You draw a minion, and it costs five less. But the card cost four. Yikes. Okay, um... So, last expansion, there was, I believe, uh, a pretty big Battlegrounds update. Like, right before or on the same day of the expansion. But that's not very good for the game. Uh, this time, we got a Battlegrounds update, like... I don't know what it was, four days ago. But it was literally, they just added Illidan and replaced Cobalt with the shittier Cobalt. So that's really not a big update at all. Especially considering Illidan is hardly ever played as he's not like a top half hero. And right now, if you're at 10k MMR, probably even if you're, even if you're over like 6k MMR, no one plays bottom half heroes. Coil Fang Warlord. Pretty good. The new Murloc is coming. I don't think that'll change too much. It needs to be a little bit more than that. Scavenging Shavara. Six damage randomly split across all other minions. Interesting. For six, though. Oh, no, that's a little pricey. The Grand Slam. Or is it Nagran Slam? I think it's Nagran. Calling next legendary, it's going to be Alar. Well, it could be. Fog, beam. It's probably going to take a while, but I think people will figure out just uh, how to play these ramp-free druid cards. They are certainly very good. No goldens at all. Yeah, that's true. We got, like, no goldens. It's kind of weird. Blistering rot. Are goldens, like, rarer now to combat the fact that you uh, get most of the cards right away? That would be a bit unfortunate for me, who buys all the cards anyway. Okay. I think I've seen those comments at least twice now. I think... I think we might have... Oh no, Hand of Gul'dan, I'm not sure we have that. Is it this Murloc that's coming to Battlegrounds? Maybe. There we go. Are the bundles worth it? Well, depends what you're trying to get out of the game. If you play only Battlegrounds and nothing else ever again, then no, the bundles are probably not very valuable. If you play a little bit of the other game and most of the Battlegrounds, the, 
I think the more expensive bundle might be worth it because you get all the Battlegrounds bonuses and some packs. And if you only play Constructed, you're probably going to buy the packs anyway, so you might as well buy the bundles with them. Okay, we just got our next Legendary here, and um, it is not Alar, unfortunately. I definitely have all the commons, though. I've seen that, like, Engineer dude several times now. Nagrin Slam. Let's have a quick breather and take a look at our collection. Oh, you can't easily see... Oh, you can't craft cards. <laughs> of course you can't. The game's not out yet. Yeah, Papig a little bit there. Three there. And three of those I was right. Yeah, I saw that guy a few more times. Yeah, it looks like it works with commons indeed. Oh, I think I know what I want. I really like Kael'thas. Wait, what? Wait, you can't craft a golden Kael'thas? He's from the next set? Oh. Oh, it follows that same rule? But we have him, it shouldn't matter that he's from the next set. Alright, fine, whatever. I'm getting a lot of goldens now that I have the set. Most of the set, that is. Scrapyard Colossus. They put that in the card reveal warrior deck. Tough to really see just how good it will be. I think it's a bit too expensive. BGs after pack openings? Yes, I'll play some BGs tonight after the pack openings. It's about 35 packs to open all the commons. Yeah, it's got to be an approximation, because you could you could just sometimes get a ton of rares and epics in between. Blade Storm. When I would buy like four or five hundred packs and get like all the legendaries, uh, I would rarely ever have all the epics. Epics were actually the main thing I spent my dust on. Can you believe that? Epics are quite expensive, and because you need two of each one, it's really difficult to get all of them under the old rule set. But under this one, where you can't open doubles, I think I think the biggest change with that is epics are much more accessible. Because if you open like a hundred something packs, yeah, you might be missing a few rares, but you typically get all of them. But the epics you wouldn't. Bubblegum. Bubblegum's okay. I like bubblegum with just, like, boomer ingredients, basically. To me, not all of them, but the vast majority of fake sugars taste like ass. Arc Spore Mishifin. Not a murloc. It's one of those, like, dudes in Zangar Marsh. The spore people. Almost a murloc. So yeah, gum is... You just naturally chew it for a long time. So I don't want to chew something that tastes like ass for a long time. Um, I think it was... Juicy fruit or something? It's the, it's the yellow one. In Canada, they make it with sugar. Or they did last time I got it, like a year ago. But in the US, they make it with like aspartame. It's horrible in the US, basically. Double Epish. Cool. Getting lots of goldens now. I don't know why it was such a dry spell at the start. What 
about this card? Rust Sworn Initiate. I don't even remember seeing this card as part of this expansion now that I look at it. Two mana, two two, death rattle, summon a one one with spell damage. So it's kind of like a two body three three for two, and you get sp spell damage. It's pretty good. It's like not a joke card at all. Pack filler? No, no, not necessarily. Warmall Challenger. I set up my own fireside. I set it up like yesterday or something. On the main Hearthstone website, like, okay, they always have fireside, but because of like coronavirus stuff, they didn't want. It's like, hey guys, why don't you get together and play some Hearthstone? Yeah, they didn't do that this time. So what they did is, they made a post, and it's like, if you want to sign up and make your own fireside so you can open your packs a little early, you can. Here's how. That was a post on Play Hearthstone, like, a week ago. So basically, that's what I did. And you can do that too, right now, actually. It's super easy. Does no duplicates protection apply to all expansions or just the new one? Well, I opened some classic packs the other day because of the new additions with Demon Hunter. Uh, uh, the new additions with Priest, sorry. And it seems to consider old sets as well. Warglaves, Warglaves are the epic for Demon Hunter. Uh, I don't believe anyone is getting a legendary weapon this time around. The... The expansion introduces legendary spells, and the legendary spell for Demon Hunter is Metamorphosis. Which, rightfully so, takes up a legendary slot, but one would think that the Warglaves of Azanoth would as well. But no, they're epic and... I might be wrong, but they don't look that good to me. They're not bad, but they don't look like constructed quality to me. But I might, might be wrong about that, because they do a lot of damage. Oh, Warrior got Bulwark! Oh, that's true! Okay, I stand corrected. Can you buy the packs with gold in Fireside? No, in Fireside, you've only been able to open packs that you get from the pre-orders. You can't purchase any more with gold or with money. It's only the pre-order packs. There, that's your War Glaives of Azanoth. Five costs, three, four. After attacking a minion, your hero may attack again. So, like, it's not bad. It is literally a... God, I forget what the card is called, but Warrior got exactly that card. Like, exactly that card. Except it couldn't go face. And it wasn't bad, but with Warrior, you can recover health using your armor up here power. Demon Hunter, not so much. Uh, not impossible, you can heal Demon Hunter, but it's not that effective from the current card pool. So, seems like that's a pretty YOLO card. And YOLO cards are fine, like aggro decks are actually very good in Hearthstone's history. It's just a 5 cost weapon doesn't usually make an aggro list. Usually in the 5 mana department you're looking for straight finishers. So it's not a bad card, it's just a bit of a mismatch with what the class is supposed to do and how the game is typically played. You can put lifesteal on it. Can you? I'm not sure that you can. There are lifesteal effects for Demon Hunter. But I don't believe you can put lifesteal on a weapon. Like, there is a weapon with lifesteal, but I don't believe there's a card that gives a weapon lifesteal. Again, not yet, anyway. I mean, if if the, if you would be able to put lifesteal on a weapon, the, then that card actually would be very good. Right? That's a pretty nice art. Marsh spawn. I think that card is in World of Warcraft, actually. Isn't a marsh spawn the main annoying small trash mob in Serpent Shrine Cavern? I'm looking it up. I don't do WoW lore, but I know the bosses and the trash that I've killed over the years. No. I guess that's not what it's called. Or Google doesn't index my search parameters accurately. Serpent Shrine was all Nagas. 
no, that's not true. Ser Serpent Shrine had, like, greenish, elementally dudes that were part of the trash. And they were actually pretty annoying to deal with, if I remember correctly. Oh, that was the third Mistress of Fury, all rares already. Okay, we're 63 cards in. Our legendary luck has not been very good yet, but it's something that can pick up very quickly. The average legendaries per packs is about 1 in 20 packs. But even though there's a pity timer of 40, it doesn't really start to kick in very much around, until around like 36 or 37 packs. Like, if you haven't gotten a legendary in like 34 packs, the chance you get one on like your third pack is almost the same. It's not a very gradual slope. It's again, a pretty hard limit. Oh, hi there. That's the Mage Prime. Now, I've opened thousands of thousands of packs knowing the limit, uh, the pity timer. Very rarely have I hit the pity timer. Very rarely. So, I think the chance of getting a legendary is just literally like, I don't know, four point something percent. That's an interesting one. Moarg Artificer. All minions take double damage from spells. Four percent, so four every hundred packs. Well, on average, it's five, but sometimes you do get a legendary because of the pity timer. So I said four something percent, because it's probably like four point seven, four point eight percent per pack to get a legendary. Actually, it's probably a little bit lower than that, because there's always a chance to get two Legendaries in one pack. It's probably about 4.5% chance to get a Legendary in any given pack. Unless you're approaching the Pity Timer. 3-3 three, three repeating, of course. Of course. Soulbound Ash Tongue. One mana, one for neutral. That's OP. Man. The elemental in Serpent Shrine Cavern you're thinking of was called Tainted Spawn of Hydros. Yes. And they were really annoying, weren't they? And it did look exactly like that. Yes. Nailed it. Okay, I didn't nail it but it was pretty close. Oh. Mm. It's a tricky card to use. This guy has such an epic name, but other than that, meh. I don't know. I set up a fireside event just for myself to open packs. You can do that as well. Now I, I'm not I'm not going to be playing these cards with anyone. We're going to play on expansion day a bit, but just then. It's more of a pure spine of pure spawn of Hydras than a tainted spawn of Hydras. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, a golden dark portal. Now, the card is obviously pretty, pretty bad in general. Actually, it's extremely bad in general. But I think the idea behind the card is you don't run very many minions. You just run minion combos. And, yeah, you only get a one-mana discount on the card, but it's not about the discount as much as you can set up potential, like, insane combos. Like, the way that I see this card being played is you can play this and a board clear 
in Warlock at the same time. So it, it might actually be all right. Do three damage to an enemy minion and a random friendly one. Okay, yeah, so that is a targeted effect. It's like, okay, it's not Dark Bomb because you can't hit face with it. And Dark Bomb hitting face is actually pretty relevant in a lot of games. Wait a second, isn't the new Holy Smite deal three damage to a minion and not a random friendly one? Wait, so a card in the new expansion is a direct downgrade from a base card. Huh, that is interesting. No, it's three damage though. Oh, it's three damage? Is it now? Oh, hold on, let me... Let me just quickly check to see the, uh... The, what's the card called? Is it called Smite, is it? What's that? Oh, damn! Oh! It turns out Holy Smite does three as well now. <laughs> Power creep, yeah. The Warlock one breaks eggs. Not necessarily. It's a random friendly. If you're playing eggs, you probably have a lot of stuff on your side of the board. It's not necessarily going to hit the egg you want it to hit. I don't think it's actually very good in a deck that would normally run eggs. It might be good in a different kind of deck, but I, I can't. I can't imagine what that would be right now. Frostbolt versus Dark Bomb. Alright, let's get real. Smite is a lot better than that new Warlock card. Enrage effects. Okay. Wow, twice the Supreme. Warlock tax. That's a pretty good pack. I think I guess the Golden Legendary pack is my best pack, but that's my second best pack. Another Golden Dark Portal. I wonder if the Golden Rule applies at all. I'm not sure that it does. If you could get a hit in first, then use it to proc Terran Gorfian and deal 3 damage to every minion. Hmm. The general rule, don't poop or you eat. What are you talking about? Did I, like, overly criticize Hearthstone today? Oh, okay. Pretty sure I didn't even. You say no doubles? Yeah, but I've, I've opened all the rares. Um, obviously, I haven't opened all legendaries. I, uh. Pretty sure I haven't opened all the epics either. Actually, if I would guess, I haven't opened even half the epics, but it's something that I do want to look into at the end. The golden rule does recognize gold to some extent. Okay. Golden common. Golden epic. Replace your hand with random demons. Give them plus two, plus two. This costs a card, but I guess demons are always going to be minions. So it's going to hit every card. Renounce spells. Not 100% sure that's the idea behind the card, but perhaps. Alright, Blizzard. For my good behavior, I demand another legendary in these last five packs. Or else I will only play games with Twitch drops for incredible Twitch viewership. Hmm. 
drive a hard bargain, Blizzard. I guess a golden epic is better than a legendary. All right. I'll take it. A lot of goldens. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. To craft a golden epic costs more than a legendary, doesn't it? Alright, let's have a look. Uh, Outland. Epic! Good. So each class gets... Two epics. Just have a golden one. One, two, two, one. One, two, one, two. Oh well, I have golden ones too. Hold on, no, no, that, that's wrong. So it's it's two, one. So I'm missing one. I have two there, so I'm only missing one. Still only missing one. Okay, I'm missing two now. Still two. Oh, I'm missing three there, so five. Six. Uh, seven, eight, whatever the other epic is. Nine. Actually, I don't know how many... I don't know how many neutral epics there are. Yeah, I, I counted three in Priest. I missed the, uh, Sethic. Veil Weaver. It's actually pretty good. I missed nine. Alright, I'm counting them again. Alright, here we go. Missing one. Missing none. Missing none. That's another one. That's two. Still two. Three, four, five. Six. Oh. Shaman has cards. Oh, ten. <laughs> uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So wait, we're we're fifteen epics short. Short out of a total of there's two for each class, so that's twenty because there's ten classes now, and three neutrals. 16. We have about half the epics. Oh, wait, 40, okay. Right, because it's it's two copies of each. Right, six, 46. So we have about 70% of the epics. About 70% of the epics. With just the pre-orders. Now, the downside of this is we have to manually dust cards. Wait, that's not a downside. We just dust the ones that suck. Wait, I actually don't know which ones those are. Honestly... I think they all could be decent. 37 out of 52. Yeah, that's what I said, about 70%. All right, legendaries now. All right. Well, how many do we have, first off? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're not gonna count Kel. So we got six legendaries. A bit below average. Two for each class. So 20, one, two, three, four, 24. Six out of 24 legendaries. Not including the ones you get for free because you get those when the game actually goes live, I believe. Or do you get them upon relog? Okay, let me relog. Give me a second, guys. Relog for what? To see if we get bonus legendaries. It's possible that we do get bonus legendaries. I didn't count Kale. So each class gets two, so we don't need to look at all the class ones. I don't count Kel, because everyone gets him. So, 10 classes, that's 20 legendaries. Terran Gorfin, this is un non gold and Terran, it's the same card. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, doesn't count. 24 legendaries. How many of them do we get? Let's count again. Someone said we got 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
Five, six, not counting him. Six out of 24, that's correct. So six out of 24 is 25%. What is 37 out of 52? Uh, shit, I don't know. 73% is it? 71. Okay, whatever. Close enough. I said 70 originally. There. I have titled the stream aptly. Battlegrounder Keck W equals increased RNG. All right. So you can't bully me with your Keck Ws anymore. <laughs>